one thing I am understanding in this journey is that we must keep God in the center of it all. I know we say it often that we must keep Jesus at the center, but do we really keep Jesus at the center? Hello there, it's your girl, Toya C. Welcome back to Transparently Speaking, where I'm here to be salt, light, and of course, a sprinkle of love. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about what it really means to keep God in the midst of everything. And when I say everything, I really mean everything. You know, oftentimes we hear the saying when we're going through trials and tribulations, the saying that goes, God will never give you more than you can handle. And if I'm being honest with y'all, I searched through and fro, all the way from Genesis, all through to Revelation, and I could not find a verse that correlates that mentality or that mindset. You know, so oftentimes when we hear people say things about God this, God that, it's very critical that we go back into the Word and really check if it's really from God or just somebody's perspective of who God is, right? But irrespective of whether that statement is true or not, the truth is, when we do face issues in life, most of the time, they don't necessarily come directly from God. Sometimes it's because of our own decisions, right? Sometimes we step out of the hedge of God's protection. I know I shared a video about that, I think, early last year or the year before that. I'll be sure to leave that video somewhere in this video for you guys to go back and watch. I think it will bless you. But sometimes it's because we also step out of God's hedge of protection. Sometimes it can be a test that God allows, you know, that God ordained. Key difference, God allowed to just kind of either purify us or to, you know, test us in our journey, right? There's so many reasons as to why God may allow these things. But do hardships really come directly from God onto his children? Mm, I don't think so, right? He allows everything, right? Because the word does say that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. So I don't know where you guys are at right now. We are currently in the month of February. It's still a fresh year, but let me tell you, the past four to five weeks, I've definitely been speaking to a lot of my friends and folks, and folks are already going through it. Some are, already, some are still in the thick of what they were going through at the end of 2023. Some are facing current challenges at the beginning of 2024. But regardless of what all those challenges may be or where they stem from, one thing I am understanding in this journey is that we must keep God in the center of it all. I know we say it often that we must keep Jesus at the center, but do we really keep Jesus at the center? Is Jesus really, really at the center, even in the midst of all those challenges? Because I want you to understand something. While God allows challenges to come our way sometimes for different purposes, the enemy also uses challenges to want to literally pull us farther away from God. And if we're not careful and we don't guard our hearts, these things could happen. So I just wanted to come in here to just speak to that person that may be going through one trial or another that is feeling a little bit downcast, right? I want to just remind you that you must keep God in the middle of it. Keep God in the mix, okay? Because here's the truth of the matter. Even if you choose to not keep God in the middle of everything you're going through, or in the mix, as I said earlier, God is still present. He's omnipresent, <laughs> His presence is not something we can ever escape. We can't hide from his presence. The psalmist says, where would I go from your presence? <laughs> where can I hide? If I go down to Sheol, you're there. If I go and hide in the valleys, you're there. God is everywhere. So if the maker of the universe, the entire universe, cannot be, you know, isolated from our situations, why would we even try? Don't try to hide away from God. If anything, lean into him and engage him in your journey as you're going through your trials and your tribulations. And before I go into a couple of scriptures I'm gonna share with you today, I want to say that, you know, if you are going through something, you're not alone, you're in good company. I'm here on the screen, but transparently speaking, I'm going through my trials too. But one thing I can thank God for, that is kind of a different way of me approaching problems in recent times compared to my previous years, is that I find comfort in knowing that God is present with me. And I also find companionship <laughs> when I do share with him. When I openly allow him in and I don't fight him, it makes the battle just less, you know, less burdensome for me. Right? Jesus says, take your burden upon me. Or, or take take me, yeah, take my yoke for his light. 
sorry, that scripture is a scripture that's so powerful, but I can never quote it properly, but I'm going to leave the scripture reference on the screen. <laughs> so go, and, go ahead and read it. Well, pretty much it's kind of like exchanging your burdens for his. And, I, and, and the burden doesn't, you know, you're doing that doesn't eliminate what you still have to go through. However, it makes it easier. Isn't that just beautiful that no matter what we're going through in life, we still have the Lord to walk with us he's not a father that just leaves us alone to go figure it out he is there in the trenches with us just an amazing god an amazing god so i say this to say that i'm speaking from my experience i'm not just speaking from my head knowledge i'm speaking from my heart to yours to let you know that it pays to keep god in the midst of it even in the midst of the trying days even in the middle of when the enemy wants to make you believe that god doesn't care or that god can't get you out of this one I'm here to tell you that's a lie. <laughs> okay? He is more than able to deliver you. He is more than able to see you through. He's more than able to refine you in the process. He's more than able to, to preserve you in the process that you may not be consumed. So with that said, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to encourage you, and then we're going to close out the video. You know, one of my favorite scriptures in Psalm 23 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Literally, the presence of God is with us in every situation. The valley of death, or the valley of the shadow of death, that's, I can't even imagine what that means, right? Well, the psalmist was saying here that he would not be afraid because he understood that no matter how fearful, no matter how scary that circumstance was, the presence of God was, was there. And that, that literally, nothing could ever take with him the power of what it means to have God present in something. And not only was God present, it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. His rod signifies, you know, discipline to a certain degree, to kind of set us straight. And his staff signifies the authority he has as the master in our lives. But he says these two things are there to comfort us on our journey while we go through those trying chapters. Also, in the book of Psalm 6, 11, it says, you, may, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In his presence. Not in his presence on just good days. No, in his presence, as long as you abide in the presence of God, you are able to find joy in spite of your situation. You know, there's a famous saying that I heard a few years ago from a song that says that this joy that I have, the world, did not give it to me so the world cannot take it away, right? Joy is not something that is we can achieve or acquire in this earthly realm based on our achievements or having a good day or having all the money or having, you know, all our dreams come true. Joy cannot be acquired or, or received from that. Joy can only be received from the presence of God. It can only be received from heaven because joy is not dependent on the circumstances of life. Lastly, let's read from the book of Psalms 27, 4. It says, one thing that I have asked of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in this house all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This last one, I just love the scripture. Like David literally said, if I don't get the opportunity to ask for anything else, this is the one thing that I want to ask for. The one thing that I need which is to just be in the presence of the Lord and to dwell in his house. And listen to this. He says, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. What is David inquiring of? Knowledge, direction, revelation, guidance. Understand that even as you're going through the impossible situation, God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. He has the answer. He is wisdom personified. <laughs> and he would never withhold it from you. He says, if you seek me, you would find me. When you seek and you search for me with all of your heart. That is what the scripture says. So not only does the presence of God comfort us when we're going through trying situations. Not only, not only does the presence of God keep us or preserve us. His presence also gives us direction on how to get out of that situation if we choose to truly engage him on that level. You know, oftentimes we usually say to God, God, get me out of this. God, get me out of this. But sometimes God is like, no, I can't get you out of this, but I can guide you and tell you which way to go. 
So even as I close this video, another thing I want to close out with is this. As you are praying to the Lord and you engage in the God in this trying season, whoever is watching this video and this is resonating with you, I want to challenge you to take your prayers to a, di to a different level. I want to challenge you to come a little higher and engage the Spirit of God for revelation and guidance. And ask Him, what would you have me do in this season? Yes, this season is not a season that I, I, I want to be in. I'm not enjoying this. There's nothing pleasant about this. This hurts. This is painful. But Lord, what do you want me to do while I am in this season? How do you want me to move? How do you want me to think? What do you want me to meditate on? Is there something in me that you're trying to refine and get out that I may become a better version of myself? What is the purpose that you have in the midst of all this? And what role do I have to play? And you just watch and see how the Lord will blow your mind. And that's pretty much it for today. If there's something in this video that touched you, I want you to just leave it below in the comments. That would encourage me as well to know that, you know what, this is not just something I'm doing in vain, right? This is our space. Um, also, don't forget to like and share with somebody because we all, we all know we live in the digital world where the algorithm is everything, right? So shameless plug, like the video, share with somebody. And if you don't subscribe to my channel, make sure you do so. And like I always say, I'm going to have all the answers. I don't know it all, but I'm glad I know the one that does. And that's Christ Jesus and you can know him too. You have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.